Hi, I'm Dr. Anthony Cave, a Stanford and Harvard trained anesthesiologist and integrative medicine specialist. And have you ever tried to heal from a broken bone or surgery, an autoimmune condition, fibromyalgia, Ehlers-Danlos? It would make sense that you would go to your doctor, explain what's going on, get some compassion from them, and not be gaslit or judged or given a prescription for extra strength Tylenol and just be let out the door. Why are doctors so stingy with pain medications? I'll share with you how you can speak with your doctors to get the care that you deserve and get the pain relief that you need. Medicine's greatest secret is our inner healing potential, and it's most powerful under anesthesia. When we let go of the reality, we think we know. First off, pain needs to be treated because under-treated pain can lead to many psychological and physical health problems, including depression, and anxiety, PTSD, as well as cardiovascular conditions and even early onset dementia. So not treating pain is not an option. So why are we doctors so afraid of prescribing these medications to the point where patients have felt so abandoned and hurt? Well, doctors have been played by both pharmaceutical companies and by patients. I'm not justifying or making excuses. I'm explaining so you know where doctors are coming from so that you can learn how to better communicate with them to get the care that you deserve. For decades, pharmaceutical companies were misinforming doctors on the risks of opioid-based pain medications. We won't talk about that one specifically. I'm gonna share personal stories from myself about how it just takes one phone call to completely ruin your career or to jade you or to have you be so afraid of prescribing any medications to patients in the future. And the story is not the way you'd expect. It's from really well-intentioned patients who are genuinely suffering from pain that you can observe. It's not like it's made up pain. It's there on the MRI or it's there visually, you can see it. And they're really good about coming to your appointments. They're engaged in speaking with you as their doctor. But maybe one time they said, oh, I had to take an extra pill of Norco. Can I get an early refill? And maybe it happens one more time. But other than that, they're really reasonable patients. You like them and you want to see them get better. It's all from a place of wanting to help your patient. And then you get that one phone call. That phone call that they were found alone, overdosed in their bedroom. That one phone call changes your life, their family's life, all of their friends' lives. And they showed along the way that they were really engaged and you never thought that they would be at risk of this happening. That's the power of addiction, how well it can cover up what's really hurting on the inside. And the addicted brain can cause us to act in ways that you would never expect in someone who you think is an addict. This is not someone on the side of the street in a tenderloin in San Francisco where you've seen me film videos before. This is somebody who is there with you. You look at them in their eye and why does this happen in this day and age when we have so many powerful treatments for pain that are not opioid based? That extra strength Tylenol that I mentioned earlier is actually very powerful when used together with a holistic healing plan that might include topicals like lidocaine or capsaicin, turmeric, frankincense, devil's claw, gabapentin sometimes, and even non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. The good old Advil can be very powerful and they have a time and a place. They're not going to be silver bullets. They're not gonna give you an immediate rush of endorphins and quench your pain the way that opioids do. But together with mind-body components like Tai Chi or yoga, can be incredibly powerful at addressing the root cause of pain, whether it's physical or emotional. And yeah, they're rarely ever isolated. You can't treat one without addressing the other. So how do you get the care that you deserve? You need to advocate for yourself respectfully with the right questions to get the knowledge that will ultimately empower you. This whole knowledge is power thing is very true in medicine because that knowledge can help you make lifestyle changes that can fundamentally change your health. Pain being one of the most common and powerful examples. The cornerstone is from curiosity. Look, there's two flavors of curiosity, I type and D type. The I type of curiosity is what we call interest or inspirational, where you're genuinely curious about what's going on in the world around you. 
It doesn't matter if you figure out the exact answer. There is a tolerance of ambiguity, which is what we call, or a tolerance of uncertainty. Even if you don't get the exact answer in the exact way that you wanted, you're flexible enough because you derive pleasure from that journey. Compare that to the D type of curiosity. It's called deprivation. Sometimes it can lead to disastrous rigidity because deprivational curiosity is a need to know curiosity. You're not satisfied until you get the exact answer that you're looking for. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it might be hurtful. Some silly examples are like when you're trying to figure out that actor's name on the TV show and you're like, ah, what is their name? I can't figure it out. What is it? What is it? You end up spinning in loops and cycles trying to figure it out and you can't be relaxed and at peace with yourself until you've figured it out. Another example is when you're trying to take a test and you need to figure out the answer to that question. You can't lie still. You can't relax until you figure out what the answer is. Another example is here in the operating room where you might be really anxious before surgery, not knowing what to expect and what's gonna happen, and you can't lie still and you end up getting anxious and afraid because you need to know exactly what's gonna happen and you just don't know. Once again, there isn't that tolerance of ambiguity. So when you're talking to your doctors, you want to approach all of your questions from a place of that I type curiosity that genuine interest. Not only is it healthier for you, but it helps your doctor better communicate and understand where you're coming from. You see, doctors have this talk called RBA. It stands for risks, benefits, and alternatives. So you need to ask your doctor, hey, doctor, what are the alternatives to this treatment that you're proposing? What are the side effects? Will it interfere with alcohol or the other medications that I'm taking? or marijuana. What are the side effects? And here's a really important one. Is this a bridge or a destination pain medication for me? Bridges and destinations are really important concepts in medicine. Bridge therapies are therapies that get you over the hump of some illness and eventually you don't need that same therapy moving forward. For example, if you have a bad pneumonia, you might get IV antibiotics in the hospital but eventually, the antibiotics allow your own immune system to clear out the bacteria or the virus, and you get off of that IV medication. You don't stay on that forever. That's different than destination therapies where you're on that therapy for the rest of your life. For example, if you have high cholesterol and it doesn't come down with any other measures, you'll be on an anti-cholesterol medication like a statin for the rest of your life. That's the destination that you're gonna end your life with. So you can ask your doctor, is this a bridge or a destination pain medication you're giving me? Is it going to be strong enough to help me get over the hump so I can do my PT and let my body begin to heal itself from this pain? Or is this a medication that you expect for me to take indefinitely without a plan on how to get off of it? Let your doctor do the talking and the explaining for the clinical rationale behind their suggestions for you. You also don't want to necessarily blow off evidence-based therapies like that Tylenol that I mentioned earlier. A lot of my patients think that it's a joke, but when you combine Tylenol with the other modalities that I mentioned, it can actually be very effective. And if you haven't tried them before, you should ask yourself why you're fighting it so hard. And if you have tried it before and it hasn't worked, you need to tell your doctor that so that they know that you've tried the totality of what they've already suggested and that it hasn't worked. And you do that by sharing your observations to be proactive in the pain plan. You need to share what the triggers are, like when I open up my bills, this pain gets worse, or when I get in arguments, or from certain foods, or certain positions or activities. The more data you're able to give your doctor, the more they'll be able to engage with you to better find a pain plan that works for you. It may or may not include opioid-based pain medications, but if it does, it'll hopefully be done in the most responsible and safe way for you. Advocating for yourself helps your doctor know more about you so that you can ultimately gain more control over your healing plan. And you have more potential to heal than you've probably ever been told. There's no one else out there who can advocate for yourself better than you can. And I hope that you feel empowered to stand up for yourself, to get the care that you deserve from your doctors, whether it's from the conventional base of medicine or from other natural treatments that are often safer and with fewer side effects.